We've all seen them at least once in our lives. Only 1% can solve this. 98% of people can't solve this. <laughs> well, this one, 95% of people can't solve this, might actually be true because 99.9% .9 of people can't solve this. I'm willing to bet that even my nerdy, sweaty, stinky, fat fan base still has no clue how to solve it. The problem is apple over banana plus pineapple plus banana over apple plus pineapple plus pineapple over apple plus banana equals four, where pineapple, apple, and banana are positive integers. The first thing we're gonna do is switch the variable names over to A, B, and C, because while it is totally mathematically valid to use fruits as variable names, it's also completely ridiculous. Now that we've got them in letters, we can multiply out the denominators by multiplying both sides by B plus C, A plus C, and A plus B. Now that we've multiplied it all out, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit by expanding the brackets and making it equal to zero. Okay, so we've got three unknowns, A, B, and C, and we know that they are elements of the set of positive integers, but we don't know anything else. Now, if this equation was just by itself and we just had this, then we could say that there were infinitely many solutions. Very obviously, we just plug in a number and then get the other two numbers out, and that would be the end of the story. But these all have to be positive integers. So whatever number we plug in as A and B, we have to make sure that C is also gonna be a positive integer. Also notice that if A, B, and C is a solution to this equation, then KA, KB, and KC is also a solution because if we plug in KA, KB, and KC into the equation, then we can factor out the K cubed, and if this is equal to zero, which we know because A, B, C is a solution, then the whole thing must be equal to zero. That means that if we imagine our solutions as a 3D map in space, we don't just have one single point as a solution, but we actually have a line of solutions. Can you see that on the board? Oh, the light is... Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> Okay, so what's the next step? This is not a quadratic equation, it's not a linear equation, it's not a polynomial. This is called a Diophantine equation. And another example of a Diophantine equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Just like how we know how to find positive integer solutions to this equation, we can also find positive integer solutions to this equation. It's just gonna take some more work. And in order to know how much work you have to do, you just have to find the degree of your Diophantine equation, which is the highest exponent of the combined unknown terms. So for example, this is three, this is three, this is three. This is also three because we've got two here plus a one. So that's three, 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 three. So all of this is three, right? So the degree of this Diophantine equation is degree three. Degree one is piss easy. If you can't solve this, then go back to watching Coco Melon or something. You're not in the right place. Degree two is easy for a mathematician, but for most people, you might find it difficult. Degree three is quite hard, quite difficult. It's gonna take some time to solve it. And degree four is, oh my God, what the f Nah. Now, if you're very observant, then you might have noticed that there is a simple solution. A is one, B is minus one, and C equals zero. Because if you plug these in, then you get one minus one cancels out. C is zero is zero. Minus three, lots of this would be minus one. This would be plus one, so they cancel out. This would be zero, 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 zero. And this would be zero as well. So it all would turn out to be zero. But these are not positive, so that's no good. But wait. This is a rational solution. Even though it's not positive, it's rational, which means that we have a rational point on our line of solutions, remember? And if we have a non-singular cubic curve C over the set of rational numbers, bear with me now, and we have a single point, which is rational, which we'll call P0, then we have an elliptic curve. So the next step is to transform this into the Weierstrass form of an elliptic curve. And we do that by letting u equal a over c and v equal b over c. Remember, we're not really interested in the exact values of c, for example, because what we really want is the ratio between a and c and b and c, because remember, when we multiply it all out, 
eventually it doesn't really matter because we've really got a line of solutions, okay? We've not just got one single point that we need to find. So really, we just need to find the ratios between A, B, and C. Then you get this big long equation and you let X equal 104V minus 48 and Y equal 104, U minus one, 13V minus six, obviously. And then you get this as our wire stress form. Now, if we want to get back to A, B, and C, you just use these equations, but basically every solution that we find to this equation will give us a solution a b and c which should match this equation here now if we plot our equation in desmos it looks like this and the first rational point that we'll use is x equals minus 100 y equals 260 and if we plug that into our equation for a b and c then we get a is 2 7 b is minus 1 over 14 and c is 11 over 14 and we can multiply it out by 14 to get rid of our denominator to get a b and c is equal to 4 minus 1 and 11 which is a solution to our equation but it's not positive so we have to keep going to find our next solution we're going to have to use a computer to find the tangent to our solution p sub zero and then find the chord which reflects it in the x-axis to get p sub one p sub one gives us x equals 8836 over 25 and y equals minus 950,716 over 125 which is another solution of this but it still isn't positive. But if we keep going up to P sub eight, then we do end up with a positive solution for our original equation, but I refuse to write it down on the board because it's 80, roughly 80 digits each. This just goes to show how crazy Diophantine equations can get. The, just this simple equation here gives us solutions which go up to roughly 80 digits. And if we had numbers higher than four, like for example, 100 or 200, then we're talking thousands upon thousands of digits. Click and watch this video if you want to see more and piss off.